think that people hire me because they really find my aesthetic comfortable and livable, not only kid friendly, but also the parents can have their friends over for cocktails. People can enjoy their family time for movie night in, in a comfortable space and also have family and friends over for Thanksgiving and the holidays. My name is Ashley Darrell. I am based in New York. I'm the founder of Ashley Darrell Interiors, and this is my home. Today we're in my home. It was built in 1864. It's colonial, it has four beds, two and a half baths, and it's around 4,000 square feet with an attic that is unrenovated and has three bed and one bath. When I found this home, it was in really bad condition. There was a lot of rot. There was holes from animals in the columns all sorts of paint, lead paint everywhere had flaked off. We did a massive renovation on the exterior of the home. I started mainly with a contractor who I trusted that did older homes. Everything was still in place and recreated columns and details from hand. I wanted to make sure that it was restored to what it should have been. When I first purchased this house in 2016, this house was meant to be a weekend house, an escape from the city. Since COVID hit, we actually moved out here full time. I did change a few pieces of art to more contemporary pieces because that's how I like to live. And when I'd originally designed this house, I wanted it to feel like a cabin. The people that had the house before me purchased the house in 1960s. They added the lights, they added the runner, and that is one of the things that I decided to keep as a memory of them. The foyer of the house is a really beautiful two-story space with a grand staircase. It was a cold space, so once we moved here full-time, I did put radiant heat underneath the slate floor and it literally transformed the space. I added a big round table with a big lamp on it and some chairs. Forever ago, I saw some lamps like this in Architectural Digest where there was leather cording wrapped, whip stitched around the lampshade and I went to find them and they were so expensive you had to be custom made. So I decided I was going to make it myself and I bought this lampshade and I sat in front of the TV one night, poked some holes, got some leather from Michael's craft shop and sat there and strung it along and now I have a great lampshade that saw an Architectural Digest. The people that came before me renovated the kitchen with Home Depot white cabinets. It's a great space, a really big room, and coming from Manhattan with such a small kitchen, it was like a breath of fresh air. But at the same time, of course I want to renovate it and it's definitely on the list of things to do. But I've kind of grown to love the color palette of the brick and the pink, gray, granite tops. We actually had it an island made for the space because there was no island. It was just a big open kitchen. And there's like a little breakfast table. The living room's probably my favorite room of the house. It's inviting, it's warm, movies, popcorn, games. It all happens in that space. I really wanted to make sure there was enough seating for everyone to be able to be in a comfortable chair. My love affair with chairs is definitely in there. Two of everything. We have a game table behind one of the chairs for two people to sit at. We have people that can sit on the sofa and then the double chair is facing the fireplace. And also one of my favorite 
things about the living room is the ottoman. When you take all the stuff off the ottoman, it's like a chaise and we throw a pillow on there and all the children lay on that and watch TV. I love finding really uniquely shaped furniture pieces that are inexpensive. Maybe the leather's torn, the fabric's stained, and then putting really great fabric on the chair and it's totally transformed. This chair I found inexpensive, this cool wing back chair with this nice rounded side and then put a great Holland and Sherry check fabric on it. For the dining room, when I was looking up historic homes and specifically colonial homes in the early 1800s, I did notice, I saw several articles and inspiration images that showed landscape as the dining room where people wanted to bring the outside in. And whether it was on wallpaper or hand painted, um, I just needed to figure out a way to implement it. I just wanted it to feel really moody and elegant and still contemporary and fun at the same time. I also wanted to make sure that it was a place for everyone to come and join on a holiday. So 10 person dining table. The two pieces behind me, they were originally two consoles that I put together and it houses one of the alcohol bars and also I clean the top off when we actually serve food and it serves as the buffet as well. The house is definitely a labor of love where it's, there's always something to do, whether it's exterior column being restored or a tree that's fallen and I'm having to replace it. We have four different bedrooms, each one with a different color because I wanted it to be a fun thing to talk about when family and friends come over and say you're in the green room, you're in the pink room, you're in the yellow room. I went to Benjamin Moore's Historical Colors as my starting point. The master's blue and we have a black bed in there and I wanted the color combination to be playing off of the paint so we did a blue, gray, and black paint color and the whole room is very muted and moody and very soft and calming. One is yellow with twin beds, so when the kids come over, they come stay in that room, and it's really fun because there's quilts on the bed and fun contemporary art in there. And then there's a room in the back with the best view. It's the pink room, and it's a suite because it used to be two bedrooms so I have a bed on one side and a TV and sofa and seating area on the other side. When people don't want to all be in the same room watching TV, they can go upstairs. And then the last room is a green bedroom with a queen size bed, four poster bed, and a little green leather desk. A lot of people are afraid of color, so it's just a really fun way to have people over to enjoy the color. The property itself and the exterior is what really drew me into this house. I walked up to the barn and was just like immediately in love. Two horse stalls and now has a vintage MG Roadster in it. And I made sure that it was left with the house because it was something special to me. I wanted to make little areas outside that we could all hang out in. So first, obviously, was the fire pit and s'more making. I got Anirondack chairs, had the fire pit made, outfitted one of the side porches with the big dining table and eight chairs. The other porch, two little chairs and a small end table so we can kind of sit out there and have dinner on an evening when it was nice and beautiful. We actually just put in a garden and we call it the secret garden because it has hedges all the way around it that were already there. We cut into the mountain of hedges to create this garden. So this is the carrot section. Oh, Shishito peppers. Look at all these. 
Then we got jalapenos right here for taco night. Some more cucumbers and then the different herbs and things that sometimes I'll use like chive, which is always fun. Love Smells it. good. The end result of this project, there's never an end because it's constantly going. There's always something to do. If there is an end to the project, then it's time for a new house. 